I'm Dawn Matthews, and today I will be talking about renewing the mind. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I chose this topic to talk about. One of the reasons is obvious, of course, with everything going on in the world today and all the lies and everything that the world is spewing out. We need to remember that we have the truth in God's word here and that we have to renew our minds to know what we need to counteract what the world is saying. Another reason why is um, I think renewing the mind is one of the most important things that we as Christians need to be able to do because I think once we renew with the mind, everything else falls into place, like being kind to others, the fruit of the spirit, spirit taming the tongue. Um, so if we can just renew our minds to his word, then I think that's just like one of the biggest things that we can do, most important things that we can do. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. And the Bible tells us in um, Romans 12, 2, not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds, that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. I like the um, Passion Translation of this better. It says, stop imitating the ideas and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. So how did we get to the point where we have so much garbage in our minds? You know, when we're born, we're born in the, um, created in the image of God. But when we're born, this is basically like our minds right here. And we pretty much don't have anything in them. We're starting with a clean slate. But then the world, as we grow, the world starts um, the world starts putting this garbage in our minds. And we begin to get it begins to get cluttered with all the things of the world. Like lies. Pain. Hate. Sickness. Disappointment. Unforgiveness. Greed. Anger. Substance abuse. Turmoil. Sadness. Loneliness. Sexual immorality. In unbelief. So before we know it, our minds are completely cluttered with the things of this world, and we have no room for God's truth in there. When it says to transform your mind, what we're really, what the word is really saying, is to take all these lies and the trash and the lies that the world has given us and put in our minds and um, replace it with God's truth. God's truth being the word right here. So, now we know how our minds became conformed to this world. Now, how are we going to renew them? 
Like I said, we exchange the lies for God's truth. So every time we have a bad thought, immediately stop that bad thought and replace it with something that you, the truth of the Bible. For instance, the lie, I hate so-and-so, or I hate this. The truth, I choose to love because God first loved me. The lie, I will never forgive so-and-so. The truth, I choose to forgive because Christ first forgave me. What happened to me was not fair. What happened to me, that was a lie. The truth, what happened to you may not have been fair, but... God works all things together for good for those who believe. The lie, I'm so angry. The truth, God gives me peace. The lie, I wish I looked more like her. I'm just, I'm not pretty enough. I'm ugly. I wish I acted more like her. She is just so nice and so kind. That's the lie. The truth, I am beautifully and wonderfully made. The lie, things will never get better. The truth, God has good plans for my life. The lie, I will never be able to break this addiction. The lie, the truth, all things are possible through God who strengthens me. The lie, so-and-so doesn't love me. The truth, God loves me. The lie, I did so many awful things in my life that I could never be forgiven. That's a big, fat lie because the truth is... Christ forgave every sin, past, present, and future, when he gave his life on that cross for us. That's the truth. The lie, what so-and-so did, is wrong. The truth, I will pray for so-and-so. The lie, oh, I am so sick. The truth, by his stripes, I am healed. So before you know it, we've replaced all the garbage, all the lies that the world has told us, all the lies that Satan has put in our minds and used our minds to distort us. And we've replaced them with the word of God, with the good things, with truth. So now before you know it, all the lies are gone. And your mind is filled with God's truth. When your mind is filled with the love of Christ and with all the fullness of God, then the spirit of your mind is renewed and freed from the deceit of the world. And out of that renewed mind come new attitudes, emotions, and practices. In Ephesians 4, 20-24, it talks about taking off the old man, and he makes all things new. The old person is the old bundle of attitudes, emotions, and practices that we used to be. The new person is the new attitude. You know, without getting into a lot of my past or anything, this is something that I have to work on every single day is being able to renew my mind because so for so many years I've believed so many lies. Um, but luckily, we have the Word of God to fall back on and to teach us how to do that. We don't have to depend on our own selves to be able to know how to do that. And we have plenty of scripture in here to, to learn. But So some of those scriptures I'm going to share with you. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you 
power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all this power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. When you have a negative circumstance, you have a negative thought. Then you say a negative thing about that negative circumstance, and then your mood begins to sink. Next, you get a bad attitude, and you end up with more negative circumstances than you started out with. But you can break this cycle in your life. You have the power over negative thinking. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity, bringing to the obedience of Christ. So take every thought captive coming into your mind that does not agree with the word of God and replace them with the thoughts that do. In other words, when you become aware of a wrong thought, you can choose immediately, I mean immediately, not to think that thought. You can replace that thought immediately with something in the Word of God. Ephesians 4.23 says, Let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. So see, it's not something that we're doing on our own. It's not something that we have to do alone because we have a helper. We have the Holy Spirit here to help us renew our minds. Thank God because we can't do it on our own. Colossians 3, 2, set your minds and keep them set on what is above, not on the things that are on the earth. You may not realize how strong you are when you set your mind on something. This works in both positive and negative ways. If you set your mind on things above, the devil cannot stop you. But if you insist on setting your mind on the things of this world, then it's very hard for the difficult to receive God's help. And if no scripture comes to mind right away when you're having a bad thought, then just ask God to guard and direct your mind. Just ask him. He'll be happy. That's his will anyways. If you ask him something that's his will, he's going to do that for you. And while I was getting ready for this, um, I my one of my daily devotionals is the Joyce Myers devotional on the power thoughts. And so just a couple of days ago while I was getting this ready, this was one this was the devotional for the day, and I thought how appropriate. Because God wants you to be encouraged. He who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up until the time that he returns. Developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. That's Philippians 1.6. God, want, God wants us to be encouraged, not discouraged. When discouragement and condemnation try to take you, examine your thought life. What kind of thoughts are you thinking? Remember, you become what you think. Think discouraging thoughts and you'll be discouraged. Change your thinking and you'll be set free. Instead of thinking negatively, think like this. I believe God. I believe he is working in me no matter what I feel or what the circumstances are, are of what's going on in my life right now. The Lord has begun a good work in me, and he will bring it to full completion. And don't forget, this is not something that we're doing on our own. We have a helper. We have the Holy Spirit. 
So as we're changing our minds and our, church, our minds are being transformed, do not forget to give him all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, because it's actually him and his word that's doing it, not us. We have our part. We can't resist, but he, he has the hardest part. So let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for this word that gives us the ability to transform our minds and to be in more like you, the way we were meant to be, Father God. And Father God, in these hard times right now where it's so easy to get discouraged and where it's so easy to just try to give up and just believe that nothing's ever going to be the same, Father God, just bring your word to our minds, Father God, so that we know that things are going to be better, that we are not going to be living like this, that you will finish your perfect work in us, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.